The basic concept behind the theory of the singularity is that after mankind invents, creates, gives birth to AI, artificial intelligence, that this artificial intelligence will have such a massive wealth of processing power, aka mental ability, that it will, in effect, learn everything, its overall mental acuity, its processing power in this way, will continue to exponentially increase as processing power does now even with our own smartphones. And that eventually, mankind will network our minds into what is effectively like a cloud. We'll be backed up as data, our thoughts, experiences, lives, personalities, our very existence will be contained in a massive network into which, while merged with this artificial intelligence, all of our individual intelligences will themselves be shared between each other so as to form a singular sort of collective hive mind. The idea being in this case that all experiences, all thoughts, feelings, and the entirety of an individual's human life will be shared with everyone else, and everyone else's will be shared with them. Now there are benefits to this, uh, predation, uh, violence, victimization, as we know it will likely cease to exist. This being because it will become effectively impossible and ultimately pointless for one to affect harm on another when that harm is personally felt and experienced not just vicariously but directly and personally by the one carrying it out. Furthermore, because of the sort of processing power, our ability to combine intelligences, the artificial intelligence itself living within the exponentially increasingly powerful overall network itself, as well as the combined resources of our own human minds, ought to be able to allow us to solve nearly every problem we come across. Notions of interstellar travel, the ultimate survival of the species, really, now, this all comes largely from the work of Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil is a futurist, and in his works, he previously predicted the rise of things such as smartphones, of social media, many, if not countless, technological advances, were things he more or less predicted, and in this same rate, he predicts that this singularity, which I just explained to you, which I generally, vaguely, briefly explained to you, uh, will be sort of an inevitability. And there's a lot of split emotions, a lot of different feelings, a lot of different takes about whether or not this would be a good thing, whether or not one would want to participate in it at all, what it would mean. We also have Elon Musk out there basically talking about how AI itself would be this existential threat to mankind. A lot of people thinking that for some reason if we invented AI it would just turn on us and become Skynet. For my part, the uh, considerations of these matters take up a lot more of my time than maybe they should. I just find it an interesting thing to sort of ponder to think about. And recently I've actually begun asking a number of other people what they thought about it. Now unfortunately, a good number of people don't seem to be altogether aware of the concept at all. But when it's explained to them, they find themselves experiencing mixed emotions about it. Now, for my part, I feel it's a natural progression on the part of human beings to sort of strive for and achieve this kind of unity, this, for lack of a better term, collective uh, mindset. The ability for all information, experience, all of it, to be shared instantaneously with everyone. The moment you plug into this thing, you see everything. Now, why do I think this is natural? Because when we consider the nature of what so much of our technology, the things that we're stabbing, driving at, and the ways in which we use it seem to play out, it suggests that whether or not we'd like to admit it, the desire for unity with other people, the desire to be part of a greater whole and greater collective is well, something that seems rather deeply ingrained in our, well, overall human nature. Now, one of the biggest objections I find that comes up is the worry over individuality, autonomy, the notion that you're giving up yourself 
and becoming just part of a bigger collective whole. Now we see this same argument reflected oftentimes in political arguments. People who say that they just won't uh, sublimate and subjugate themselves to a collective whole. That they're individual, autonomous decision making. Uh, that their self-interest should be put above that of the notion of some sort of conceptual collective. And I can understand that. I really can. We've seen time and time again throughout history failed attempts to create you know, single-minded collectives in which individuals own individuality, their decision-making, their choices, preferences, their overall essence and being is crushed, oftentimes by force, to make sure that the collective and the hive can function appropriately. But when we consider, for instance, how deeply people seem to desire to share oftentimes innocuous moments throughout their lives. The evolution of social media, the evolution of even just the smartphone, the camera phone, the advent of the selfie itself. People have an almost compulsive desire to share. We all know that person who maybe shares too much, you know, the TMI type. But all the same, it does seem to be this driving sort of instinct, something natural within us, not just to seek out means by which we can communicate with each other as thoroughly, effectively, regularly as possible, but also in the course of our developing technologies to do so in a way which allows us to do this in continually um, effective means. It's for this reason that I have a feeling that this notion of the singularity itself is something of an inevitability. In the same way in, that I believe I said in a previous video, and I know I've said this of phones in the past too. How many people are comfortable leaving their house or sometimes even going to the bathroom without this little gadget, this gadget, which connects them to the world, this gadget through which they can see everything, connect with anyone, be in constant contact, in constant touch and never miss a beat. It's not just an obsession with things like productivity and the making of money that drives these sorts of things. It seems to be ultimately a natural human instinct to find, to seek out and obtain any means we can to maintain that constant contact with the broader world. Maybe it's because in our own sort of existential senses of ennui, that we feel this isolation, this, this, uh, well, like we're prisoners in these meat sacks, that there's some soul between the ears and eyes there, that there's some us yearning to get out and that we're just trapped. And that if we don't have contact with others, that we're just going to lose our mind. And we even see in the course of the evolution of our own society, we see in the news cycle, especially with mass shooters and the like. Not just that, but antisocial behavior in general. We see what the effects of isolation are. And strangely enough, at the same time, while social media and smartphones and the immediacy, as the society of immediacy and instant gratification come closer and closer to us. As we get more of it, we tend to feel more and more isolated. Now, some people decide to become seekers. They go and find religion, faith, they meditate, experiment with psychedelics, all manner of ways to sort of get around this existential crisis of theirs. But by and large, the majority of people, whether they suffer from one of these or not, seem to gravitate, drift immediately back towards the network, back towards the cloud, back towards the universe contained behind this. And now you'll understand the uh, title, if you didn't, The Black Mirror. And I don't altogether think it's a bad thing. I know myself, I live an exceptionally isolated life these days. I don't really have quite as many people as I used to. The majority of contact I have outside of bartenders or shopkeeps these days actually comes online. And in those times in which I feel hopelessly isolated and the depression begins setting in and the anxiety begins making me question every single decision I've ever made, etc., etc., and you know all, of, I'm sure most of you at least know about these kinds of cycles with yourself. It's this instinct to gravitate towards these screens for either distraction or connection or comfort or all three of them and then some, which drives, which I'm driven towards. 
And I know a great number of other people who are driven in the same way. Hence, their proliferation. But it's for these reasons that I tend to think that the concept, the evolution of the singularity within our species, is an inevitability. Because it's something ingrained within us, and that causes me to ask the kinds of questions I do to people, such as, would you participate in this thing? Now, if they don't know what it is, I will explain it to the best of my ability. And I will ask them. Provided, let's say, that they're not religious, that they don't believe in an afterlife. That if it meant that their consciousness and awareness could live on infinitely. That they could be effectively immortal. That they could experience everything. Not just everything that's happening now, but everything that is to come. That they could take part in it, be a part of mankind's spreading into the galaxy, moving beyond just the, the planet itself, moving even beyond just the corporeal realm. If the perception of reality itself could be defined in this sense as being the definition of reality itself, if they could, in this case, experience countless different realities, that they could live through scenarios, not in a meat vessel like we do, but perhaps even with the illusion of such, that they could live within this kind of confine, but that in exchange, a certain amount of their individuality, a sense of privacy, as it was, would be sacrificed. That they, as part of this collective, would in fact know and see and experience everything everyone else had and doesn't do, and in turn, their own experiences, thoughts, and feelings would be shared amongst the collective instantaneously. Leading, of course, once again, let's remind ourselves to what is also an immediate sense of understanding. I asked these people, would they make this exchange? And so many people say no. Many say yes. But it's that divide that makes me really curious. And that causes me to then wonder if in the same manner that we found mathematically and just through basic experimentation we've pretty much proven that time itself is relative that the flow of time is dependent on velocity proximity to density these sorts of things gravity if our perception of time is itself a highly and entirely relative thing then who is to say that our sense of self itself that our perceptions of self and being aren't the same and if such how can we be remotely certain that it's actually a sacrifice at all? That if in, instead of being an isolated individual, which oftentimes when you think about it comes across as something of a rather self-righteous statement that I, because I am me, and I am me and no one else is, and I am all on my own, and I am in charge of myself, even though theories about biological determinism might suggest otherwise, that is special and meaningful. Everyone wants their lives to be meaningful, but if there's one thing that the news cycle shows us, it's that life is actually pretty damn cheap. But what if all of that could be wiped away? The cheapness of life, the predation, the violence, the victimization of one person against another, or one person against a group, or one group against another. What if all of that could be erased? And what if, much like slipping into a dream, the notions of self and the experience of existence as we understand it seems to just sort of slip away and become replaced with something perhaps even greater. Is it worth it then? These are just some of the thoughts I think about. And as we barrel into 2020, I come to realize that provided that we don't extinguish ourselves as a species altogether, I don't so much believe that the, the advent of AI and the singularity itself is, is a possibility. As much as I think it's an inevitability. So it'll be interesting to see what comes next. <laughs>